MH-32 airfoil wing. MH-32 wing. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be flying the new MH-32 wing. Please like and subscribe when we get to a thousand subscribers, we're going to do subscriber giveaways. This is the RG15 airfoil. It is fast and nimble and has a wide speed range and is great in slope lift. The MH32 is very similar to the RG15 but has a little bit more camber. This additional camber gives it more lift, but it's not quite as fast, but it is a more forgiving airfoil. Using the airfoil tools comparison, you can compare the RG15 to the MH32 and see their different coordinates and characteristics. And then you can plot their polars. So looking closer at the polars, the red and green are the MH-32, and the orange and gray are the RG-15. The lift-to-drag bucket, the airfoils are very similar, but in the lift-to-angle of attack, you can see there's an offset in the MH-32 to the RG-15. And that the drop-off of the MH-32 is not as drastic as the RG-15. 15, which gives it a much gentler stall characteristics. Now the offset in the lift to drag versus alpha and the coefficient of moment versus alpha give it its other characteristics of being a more forgiving airfoil overall. So the MH-32 wing prints and builds just like the other four servo wing. You print out the panels using the Sorcraft settings in whatever material you want to use. And uh, you start with the center section and glue the carbon to it and work your way out to each of the wing tips. The design uses a seven millimeter tube spar instead of a six millimeter. This tube spar is readily available from several sources as well as it's it's about the same stiffness as the solid six millimeter rod but weighs about half as much. So weight savings. And then if you make it with the lightweight PLA, either the Polymaker lightweight PLA or the foaming lightweight PLA like the eSun or the Color Fab, you can save even more weight. And between the, the lightweight stiffer spar and the lightweight PLA, you can save 150 to 180 grams in just the wing. The wing will fit all of the different fuselage combinations. You can fly it in uh, the slope configuration, here's a, or you could switch it out to a fuselage with the power pod. And Another benefit of the MH32 is that it's not as sensitive to CG placement. So uh, if you're a little off on the CG, it's, it's not quite as uh, susceptible to tail heavy, nose heavy, um, issues and the stall characteristics make it a little more forgiving in in how it flies highly suggest the mh32 for beginners 
the uh, higher lift coefficient and the better stall characteristics make the MH32 um, more forgiving all around airfoil for the power pod as well. Flies fast, but you can slow it down for a nice gentle landing. All right, that's enough talk. Let's go do some flying. So I've flown this a bunch. Uh, as you can tell, it's a little rough around the edges on the, the wings. Broke the wing tip off. Uh, it's insane. I've crashed it, cartwheeled it several times, and uh, it's still... Here we go. Do some. All right. That was in bed. Now this motor and prop combination is not a speed demon. It's more for just getting altitude quick, which it does. Fuselage is made from the polymaker material as well. Same with the tail. So the all-up flying weight of this is it's like a 685 with the thousand milliamp hour battery. Four servo wing. All right, here we go. Up and away. Oh. Oh. Not bad. Orange wing tips are easy to see. Like it. This might be my favorite build of this yet. <laughs> Some. We're up here on Mount Zion and the wind's blowing somewhere between uh, 6 and 10 miles an hour. Uh, it should be a good day for flying. Let's try it out.
<laughs> All right, so here's the Pika or the VTL version of the Rough Gen. Uh, same configuration, same uh, wing. <sighs> nice. Come on. Nice. Uh. Uh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> 